Hey folks, got a super exciting project that we're gonna start today that I'm gonna share with you. And that project is gonna be completely transforming everything in the back of this fish house. Let me move the camera over here a little bit and give you an idea of what's going on here. So we have a new tank coming. It's gonna be probably early summer when it gets here. I'm not really sure, but Custom Aquariums is making us a new big giant tank. It's for Lisa. And that's all I'm gonna say about it. But we need to clear out a bunch of space because we have that space right there that we're gonna be putting Lisa's new tank. The problem is there's a tank there. There's actually several tanks there because there's tanks below it that you can't see because of these giant barrels sitting in front of it. But we gotta clear that out for Lisa's tank. How we're gonna do it is doing a double decker stand right here that will house both 125 gallon tanks and we're gonna take it even further and stack two 75s right next to it. There is the 75 that's already sitting there and then there's my 75 gallon goldfish tank that we're gonna put double decker and we're gonna actually put them flush with the 360. Let me show you the end of the 360 here. You can see the 125 sits way back. It sits about 24 inches back. We're gonna bring that forward to be flush with the 360 all of the tanks, and then we're gonna use these three barrels behind it to provide water storage for the saltwater tank. So we're killing so many birds with one stone in this project. The project is gonna have multiple layers to it. The first is gonna be, we're gonna build the stands. That's what we're doing today. Once the stands are built and the tanks are in place, then we're gonna fancy that stand up by trimming it out and making it look really, really good not like that, just two by fours. We're gonna make it look fancy. Something that you'd be proud to have in your living room and looking at it every single day. That'll be on the next video. And the third video is gonna take it to another level. We're gonna talk about filtering these four tanks because I was fortunate enough to be sent three filters from Fluval. Two of the new FX6s, or what? No, FX2s, sorry and then one FX4. The reason why is because they asked me to do a review of the FX2, and I said, well, I need two of them because I'm gonna do these 75s, and I want them to be matchy-matchy, and they said, okay, no problem. And then I said, oh, by, by the way, I want my 125s to have matching filtration on it too, so I need an extra FX4, because I've already got one on the discus tank, and they said, no problem. I've had a relationship with Fuvel for a long time. So it makes sense that they'd want to work with me on that. So video three is going to be the filtration for all four of those tanks. And then the last video in the series is going to be creating a new water storage system for all of this. It doesn't just apply for saltwater fish keepers. It'll apply for everybody. So lots of stuff happening in this four part series. It all starts today with these stands. So let me show you this, how I built the stands and how we're gonna do all of that stuff. And, uh, and then we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll t you know what I'm saying? All right, it's time to build these stands. And to do that, I used a design that I've used dozens of times and I've shown it in other videos. Now I'm not gonna take credit for this design. This was actually taught to me by a neighbor back in 1993. I was building two tanks into a wall in a basement that I was finishing and he was a carpenter professionally and he came over to give me a hand. He said, you've got to think about what's going to be supporting all the weight of the tank and you can't rely on just nails or screws and taught me the right way to do it. As we go on in the project, I'll show you the fundamental thing he taught me that makes this design super strong. Now to get on to the build. I set up my DeWalt slider outside of my barn and just started cutting away. Building these stands is all about cutting all of the pieces and then putting them all together. It's not a build as you go kind of thing, at least for me anyway. I decided for this one to go with two by sixes as the main horizontal support pieces for the top shelf and two by fours for the bottom. These would be the long pieces that the tanks actually sit on. I built this design for 125s before entirely out of 2x4s and they were totally fine, but for this one I thought I'd beef it up a bit, make it look a little more substantial, and also help me sleep at night. 
A six foot piece supporting an aquarium that weighs anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 pounds when it's full of water needs to be strong, especially without a center support. The two stands I'm replacing were built entirely out of two by fours, but since they weren't a double decker stand, I could put the center support in so it wasn't a concern. I used two by sixes for the top shelf because there's no center support, but used two by fours for the bottom because I was able to add small center supports. You'll see me install these a little later in the build. I guess my point is, if you're gonna build this design to stack two large tanks, I definitely recommend using two by sixes for the long span. It just makes life easier and gives you a little more peace of mind. With all the pieces cut, I moved everything into the barn, basically because it was a little warmer in there, and I started putting everything together. Now you might be new to this channel and you're looking at this barn thinking, uh, that doesn't look like any barn I've ever seen. Well, Lisa and I use this barn as our warehouse for our website, keepfishkeeping.com. If you haven't heard of our site, you might want to check it out. We sell everything you could ever need for your aquarium, including live betas, live tropica plants, fish food, chemicals, filters, you name it, we've got it. If you place an order, you're looking at the exact place either Lisa or I will be packing your order to ship out to you. All right, let me get back on point and give you a little warning. As you see me put this together, you're gonna to be like, oh man, that looks a little wobbly. I can assure you, everything is fine. This barn was built in the mid 1800s and there's not a flat spot in the entire building. Putting this together on an extremely uneven floor makes it challenging, but there's really no way to screw this up as long as you use a framing square and take your time. Now the key pieces to this design are the shelves that the aquarium sit on and the uprights or posts on all four corners that hold it together. The four upright supports are what carries all the weight. And that's where my neighbor taught me the lesson about carrying that weight. The critical part is having the extra pieces on the interior of the frame that the shelves sit on. If you imagine, if this piece didn't exist, the shelf would just be held to the posts by screws. Screws are strong, but that's a lot of weight being held by four or five little slivers of metal. Adding these support pieces takes all of that weight and sends it all the way down to the floor. So you're not depending on just little screws holding it up. You're not depending on the wood holding it up. It's actually both of those things and the floor supporting the weight. I really hope that makes sense. Now let me just say this. As I'm looking at this footage, it definitely looks like there's huge gaps between the shelves and the supports. I can assure you there's not. This is the rounded corners of the 2x6s along with unevenness of the lumber that just makes it look like that. I promise these are all well supported. It's just one of those downsides to working with dimensional lumber, but it doesn't matter because all of this is going to be covered up when I trim it out. Now on the topic of covering it up, this entire rack system is going to be painted black when it's all done. The pieces of the frame that will be exposed on the inside aren't going to be easy to access once we get the tanks in, so I added the trim pieces to the inside and painted them now while it was all open. Like I said before, working with dimensional lumber is tricky for everything to be perfect, especially when you're working on uneven floors here in the barn and in the fish house. With this in mind, I decided I was going to trim it all out once it's in its permanent place. This way it'll look much more finished and won't have any gaps or uneven areas. It might look a little funny now with big old screw holes and some spots painted while others aren't, but in the end, it'll all make sense. And by the way, everything I did for the six foot stand for the 125s, I did for the smaller rack for the 75s. It's just two feet shorter. All right, so here we are. The stands are done, both for the 275s and the two 125s. These need, obviously, to be moved into the fish house. We're not gonna be putting these in here. That would be way too much, but they're all set, and that's what we're gonna do in the next video in this series, is putting the tanks on here and getting the filtration and all of that set up. And then the next video after that is gonna be taking these stands and making them look 
amazing instead of just a pile of two by fours. They're gonna look really good when this is done. It's gonna look like something that you'd be proud to have in your living room. So I'm excited to share that with you. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that so that you see when those videos come out. We're gonna be talking about the FX2 filters like I showed in the intro or talked about in the intro. We'll do a whole review of those as well as getting all of this set up and then at the end of the end of the whole series, we're gonna do that water storage setup that I talked about. So lots of really cool things happening. I'm really excited to share all of this with you. Can't wait to talk to you on the next part of this process. And that's really all I have to say, bye.